All right, welcome. I'm Bonnie Saratori, and we are with Get Liberated with Spiritual Acceleration. Okay, so today's uh, more of some consciousness teachings, good stuff to come. So just waiting for some people to get here. Welcome. All righty, I'm just going to go ahead and just... Hey, Chris. <laughs> All righty, people are coming. Cool, cool, cool. <clears throat> I'll just give it another minute and then I'll... Cool. All right. Just have to be able to see. All right. Oh, nice. Cool. Some new people. Canada. <clears throat> All right. Okay, so today I'm going to give a little bit of information, a little bit of training, not training, what do we call it? Enlightenment. How's that? Speaking of which, I just want to say another Canadian. Okay, cool. All righty, cool. Nice. <clears throat> Okay, um, I just want to say something about enlightenment because on some level that's what liberation is about, although it's not really about, it's not really enlightenment, it's about liberation. But let me just share way back in the 70s, back in the 70s, I, um, I had an experience and, then, and actually I've had many experiences of this where I've went into states of pure awareness, pure consciousness, um, fully aware, you know what I mean? I wasn't in like some altered state. I wasn't doing drugs. I wasn't, you know, doing anything. I wasn't meditating, <clears throat> but it's happened to me different times. I remember one time it happened at the kitchen window. I was looking out the window and all of a sudden, boom, there I was. It's a state of pure awareness. It's, we would We would actually call it enlightenment because it's a state of consciousness where there is no attachment. There's no good, bad, right, wrong. Don't find fault. It's like there's nothing inside that there's any kind of angst or that there's just nothing, nothing that um, that we can grab hold of that finds fault with. But it's also a state of oneness and recognition. So I, that started for me back in the 70s. And um, you know, to be able to to know that experience, what happened for me the first time was when <laughs> when I had that experience. I mean, there's nothing. It's like it's like peace. It's like free. Okay. And so, of course, when the when it when I wasn't in that state anymore, of course, you know, I didn't hold it. My my desire was okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna seek enlightenment. Okay. So, <clears throat> of course. Um, that's the seeking of enlightenment isn't, <laughs> here's my take on enlightenment, it ain't going to happen, all right? So that's why we have spiritual li liberation. That's what we do, get spiritually liberated. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing, because it's one way to start helping anyone who's interested to li be, be more liberated, to be free from your own mind, to be free from your own emotional wounding, to be you know, not so locked up and frozen and, uh, you know, stuck in our worlds because of our own stuff, okay? So in that journey, of course, you know, my whole life has been devoted to my own waking up as well as helping others to wake up. And, of course, I've learned massive, massive, massive amounts through that journey, of course. Anybody would if that's your focus and your intention. So, you know, I have people, when I, when I talk about things like, you know, that we're 100% responsible, that we co-create our, our lives, um, you know, some people have difficulty understanding how that's even possible, especially when we look at situations like, well, what about a child? So you have a child who's been abused, and, and, and then people's questions are, well, why is God letting this happen? Or... You know, how is this child accountable or responsible for their lives, okay? Or, you know, it's like 
the questioning of what's really what's really true. So just a little, just so y'all know, in my life, I've been plugged in to alternative alternative realities all my life. I've known they've existed. I know that I know that there's ghosts. I know that there's other frequencies. I know there's things of other dimensions and time and space because I've seen them and I've seen them all my life. And it's not about being crazy or anything other than discovering what exists. And in this work, the spiritual acceleration, what I'm finding exists is mind blowing. So not only do you have massive amounts of interference, we also have what we've created, what we've agreed to explore, what we've agreed, agreed to, to do. So let me just back up a little bit and then I'm gonna get into questions, but let me just share a little bit about, let's get clear on how do you create your reality? How do you co-create and how do you do have things done where you're really not a victim, where God isn't punishing you, where somebody else isn't doing something to you, where you're actually a co-creator in your life, okay? So, <clears throat> We'll back up and we'll back up to when, I love doing this stuff. when, when, when original, originally, okay? When you first come in, all you really have is that frequency of the core separation from oneness, which is an angst, okay? We're all still dealing with most of that. This, the core separation from God itself, from creation, the all that is. So, you know, prior to that, you had no awareness of anything. You just existed, our consciousness, our awareness, the same thing that we're experiencing right now. Let me just back up. So right now, in this moment, if you take a moment and become aware of your own awareness, your own awareness, you are aware, you have awareness. Okay, now, when you sit in that awareness, just being aware of the awareness itself, not, not your mind, but the, the, the sensation, the awareness that is your awareness, when you are sitting back and being aware, you can sense your own awareness. That awareness <laughs> is the same awareness that we all are, okay? We are all that same awareness. How cool is that? So right now, everybody that's here, we're all still in that same awareness. We just don't realize that my awareness is your awareness. We're all in the same awareness. But we just don't realize it, okay? But prior to, prior to, we might call the big bang or the, the waking up or where things began to be created through, through physical frequencies. So I've also had an experiences too, people where um, I've gone back in time, back in the temples when I was a high priestess initiate and going into the sarcophagus, which is the final initia initiation. And going into that and then being in there, I was shown and, and saw many things. I saw how that life was created. I saw that consciousness, the moment of consciousness becoming aware of itself. That's what we, that's like the big bang kind of thing. And so seeing all that, it's like it, it, it gives information and it helps me to understand things. So coming back to our own co-creation and how we create things, basically, once we, once we become aware, see, basically we're all this. We're all just this energy of awareness, okay? But the moment we become aware of our own self, become aware of our own awareness, which is what's happening right now, you are aware of your own awareness. Therefore, it feels you are separate. So there's our first little angst, okay? And so as we begin to move forward in our soul's evolution, which is what's happening, we're all evolving. Our souls are evolving. We are waking up. But basically, we're going back, you know, ultimately the plan is to go back into pure awareness again, okay? So, we come in, we have experiences, and then we want to know ourselves. In order to come back into that pure awareness, then we got to know what creation knows, direct. Not just someone telling us, but direct. So, once we decide to know ourselves in all ways, so maybe one of the ways that we know ourselves is in a, in a state of betrayal. Okay, so betrayal isn't just going to be betrayal. It's going to be betrayal. It's also going to have feelings of being rejected. It's going to have feelings of, of feeling um, judged. And so, and so the list goes on. But basically, as a soul, what we're looking for is we want to know ourselves in all ways. But, we, but in order to do that, that means you have to have an experience and not leave yourself 
because you've had this experience. What happens whenever you have something really big and you have all these big emotions? What's the typical thing to do? Get away from it, right? Avoid it, push it down, don't go there. So what happens is, is one of the reasons why we keep doing the same old recycling lifetime after lifetime is because we didn't stay in our body. We didn't stay with the soul consciousness in the body while we were going through a sense of betrayal. I'm just using betrayal as, the, as a, um, an example. So we feel betrayed, we get hurt, uh, we blame everybody else, that's what we do. You made me feel this way, it's your fault. Why are you doing this to me? I love that one. As if someone's really doing anything to us that we haven't already co-created. So, you know, in, in waking up, you gotta stop blaming and making their life about anybody else because it's not. So we come in and we want to know, but what happens is, is our first experience is so traumatizing, we can't get over it. We didn't stay in the body. So guess what? We're going to do it again. So we come back in again. It's going to look a little different, but we've asked for this. We've co-created it. We've got our co-creators, our soul family members helping us. Okay, let's make a deal. I'll help you, you know, get through this feeling, the betrayal thing. Can you help me with this other piece? All right, cool. So we come in, we forget, of course, and then now we're victimized, and guess what? Again, again and again. What? More evidence. Okay, so over time, that same issue of feeling betrayed, lifetime after lifetime, we're using the color green for this one. See, so after a while, you got a lot of betrayals to deal with. So those betrayals, if you haven't cleared them, if you haven't released the frequency of the trauma, what that really feels like, and to know thyself in betrayal, what it feels like, what it is, who you are in that, then you're going to keep inviting it over and over, okay? So in, in a situation where we have a kid, a child being abused, you know, sexually molested and abused or even beaten up and killed, somewhere back in the live stream, Things happen, they didn't get the lessons, they didn't know it all the way, so now they've agreed to come back and do it again, all right? So what's, I, what's really important, people, is that you start to grasp and understand. Some of you get it, some of you don't know this, some of you already know all this, some of you, this is brand new, okay, and everything in between. But basically, your soul, your creator, your divine, divine creator incarnate, and you are creating constantly. Everything in your world you are creating, but you're creating it from your subconscious, not your conscious mind. Okay, you're creating it from the subconscious. So that's why when I'm clearing, I'm going into your subconscious and clearing out all the, the, the beliefs and the conclusions and all kinds of stuff in the subconscious. So coming back to how we co-create, how we create our lives, if you keep remembering that what we're doing here is we want to know ourselves in all ways, okay? In order to do that, we have to have direct experience. I think you all know that on some level, because if I tell you something and without direct experience, it has no value, has no meaning. You don't learn the lesson. But beyond that, it's more than that. It's, it's like when we are, when we have these ex situations or events or things that cause us to feel betrayed or feel abandoned or rejected or feel like we're unloved or we're not enough, or feel afraid that we're not supported, that we're never gonna have enough money, or whatever all these frequencies are, the key is, and I've said this before, you have to let yourself know these frequencies and you have to let your, keep your energy in your body. I'm gonna tell you a quick little story. I tell this to my students because it's, it's such a trip. I mean, it's so real. I could feel it. One time, I went, 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 this is back in the 80s or something, <clears throat> I met this guy and I went <laughs> to see him anyway, it wasn't working out. So when I got down there, he was with somebody else. So I left and I'm driving and I'm, you know, it's like all of a sudden I'm like crying my guts out, crying my heart out, feeling so broken hearted. Okay. So what happened though, I could feel, I literally felt my, my energy, my soul kind of go up and out. And I, and I said, get your ass back in here now. If I have to feel this, you're going to feel it. So I did. So that energy came back in. I let myself just, because I knew already back then, I already knew this process. So I just let myself completely die to the frequency, completely all these energies that went into deep, deep past. In my earlier life, it unraveled stuff from past lives, saw all kinds of images, all kinds of different frequencies presented, but I could feel things just purging out of my body. And then 
when I was done, you know, it was, it was like done, you know, so I, it's like move on. But bottom line is, is I, my point is, is I stayed in my body. I, I pulled my soul consciousness in and I stayed conscious and present while I felt like I was dying, while I felt like my heart was literally shattering. And there was times it feels, feels like that I can't do it. It's too intense. Okay. It feels like it's just so intense. And I did it. And obviously I didn't die because I'm still here. Uh, <laughs> but bottom line is, is that's the process. In order for you to unravel things, in order for you to be liberated, in order for you to be and shine your beautiful divine light, you got to get this wound and stuff out. And you got to stop doing this over and over and over again. This is the time period where we're stepping in a new paradigm. So it's time for this old behaviors, for these old ways, these old paradigms to be done. Okay. But at the same time, you still have to know how to embrace what's happening and literally die to it. Okay. So here's another thing. If you're in, like you've seen people and people you've, we've many, oh, maybe you probably had experiences where you had something big happen and then you just let go and you sobbed and you cried but you'd completely died to the situ to the feelings. So there was nothing else but the feelings. And in doing so, you stayed in the body, but also there's no mind. There's no mind at all. Okay. So that's what happens when you go into these deep places of trauma and pain and all that, you got to lose the mind. And in doing so, then the energy starts hitting the subconscious and you're unraveling from the subconscious and you're letting go of past lives and all this stuff. So you don't have to come back and do that same one again. Okay. So it's, you know, most people are very challenged in letting go and surrendering. They think they're doing it. I can't tell you how many hundreds of people that would come to me saying, I've done my emotional work. And I'm looking at their energy field and going, really? Good for you. Okay. So then I would get them on the table and they would go into their process. And now they do is emote. They weren't doing true, authentic, deep feeling. They were emoting. Okay. In fact, I wish to work with a lot of sannyasins a lot. They were great at emoting because that's what they had to do almost every single day was, you know, I mean, I'm not negating a lot of, they did amazing, powerful things, but quite a few people got stuck in the emoting because it's, they didn't have the, the support that they needed to be able to show you're making noise, you're, you're emoting, you're not feel, you're not dropping in. Okay. So we are all co-creators. Okay. We are creator incarnate. We create everything in our lives, not from our conscious mind, but you can tell what's running your life. You can tell just by witnessing what's going on in your world, in your life, that's going to reflect to you what you hold in your subconscious. So get over the stuff about you did that to me. It's your fault. Why are you hurting me? You know, it's like God must be punishing me. No one's punishing you. I'm going to tell you straight up, you are not being punished. Okay. You at your higher levels are calling more in so you can wake up and live free. But you just need some tools and some understanding to do that. All right. So anchor it in your creator. If you want to create something, got to clean up what's in the subconscious. Otherwise, you can't co-create. How are you going to co-create if you can't clean up your, your subconscious? All right. That's what we do. That's what spiritual acceleration is all about. Okay. So it's accelerating you. It's clearing you in ways that you won't find anywhere else. And it will definitely assist you on your journey. All right, so now I'm gonna kind of look at some questions here, see what we got going. Hmm. Okay, let's see here. Does anybody have any, okay, let me, I need some, I wanna see if there's any kind of questions here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All righty, okay, we got lots of cool people from different places. You can all see this, I'm thinking. <laughs> All right, we got betrayal right now. Let's use that one. Let me see that one. Okay, Anna Julia. Anna Julia. I'm gonna pin her for a sec so everybody can see this one. I'm thinking that works, okay. Betrayal is happening to me. Okay, so in this journey of betrayal, and it's happening right now, are you aware of feeling like someone's, been, someone's doing something to you? 
Are you aware that you're actually co-creating this because you want to unravel betrayal? So if you can, let me just see what if she says anything. Okay. Oh, I pinned it. Oh, I get it. Okay. Sorry, guys. Okay. Yeah. So uh, when you feel into that and you feel into betrayal, you know, you might have, and most people feel like, well, as soon as you feel betrayed, it's always about whoever did that. Okay. The person that betrayed you. And, and then too, we go into thoughts and feelings like, Oh, someone's doing something to me. Okay. And you're doing it to me. It's you're the reason why, 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 why are you doing this to me? And so where'd she go? Where'd she go? There she is. Okay. Is there anything you want to say about that? Anna Julia, Anna Julia. Let's see if she's got anything that she wants to say. When we are clear and healed, whatever. Okay, okay, I'm gonna actually answer another thing just in case she responds. Okay, so this is from Melinda, and she's asking, well, obviously you can see this. Okay, so what is our sponsor published? Okay, so when we're clear, okay, that, yeah, that reminds me. Your reactions are based on what's already inside of you. It's nothing new. It's carried over from past lives. So when you're clear, when you're clear from the kind of wounding or whatever, you know, whatever issues that you've got running, when you're clear, I can tell you straight up, you are not going to have those kinds of, you will not have those same kinds of reactions. You won't be having big reactions. You might have a preference on things, but you're not going to have you know, a reaction and you won't be blaming somebody else. Okay. So in answering that question, when we're clear, okay. So when problems do show up, it's more of a, you know, it's more like, it's more like reacting or, or it's more like, more like responding to the situation. Okay. Like something arises, you got to deal with it. And if you look in the past, in the past, maybe you would have been flipped out or overwhelmed or blaming or whatever. It isn't going to happen. You won't have big emotional things happening. You're not going to have big reactions happening. Um, but you will have the ability to make choices more clearly. So um, the clearer we are, the less reactive we are, and the more available we are. And what's cool is we're not so afraid to embrace life so the clearer we are within the more available we are for the world the more available we are for our beloveds our friends our families and um the more available we are for ourselves okay and it makes you know it keeps our heart open and we can feel that so our reactivity goes down <laughs> at least like 90 percent so you know it's it's cool because you also lose attachments people Things, you know, it's like things don't hold the importance that they once had, you know, things that could make you, when I was younger, I was like really early in my life, I was like 18 years old, and um, I had big experiences of loss and things taken, and it was like devastating, like seriously devastating, <laughs> you know, I think I cried about those things for years, but um, but what it did is it, un it unraveled my attachment to, to material things, to, to many things in this world. So, you know, we learn these lessons through direct experience. And, you know, for me, it's like I'm willing to, to go through what I need to go through. So basically, people, clearer you are, less reactions, no attachments, allowing. You see things, it's like, it's all okay. It's all good. There's nothing wrong. And that's a cool way to be living. All right. Okay, now I'm going to go with Sherry. Sherry Ross. I'm going to pin her. Let me just see. Okay, if a personal relationship. Whoa, whoa, hang on. Sorry, guys. Okay. Um, if, and if you blame that person, what can you do to show up differently? I had a big. <laughs> okay, yeah, you're going to blame the other person, of course, in the beginning. Okay. But now that you're realizing that this is a co creation, you know, you and your partner made these agreements way before this lifetime. And to do this dance, so now here it is, and then you're doing the blame game. Now what you do is you take the blame off. You use this, you use that relationship because it activated the feeling inside of you. 
Okay, Sherry, do you know what I'm saying? It activated and lit up those feelings inside of you that were already there. So for you now, now that you've been activated, now that you can feel those feelings because something activated them, now what you do is you, rather than blaming out there, you, those feelings are now alive. You're, they're, they're in your energy. You know them. So now what you do is you face it, okay? You face it. And what I mean by that is right now, Sherry, when you think about this betrayal with this person that in, your, in the dance, then when those initial feelings that you're, that you're feeling, it's going to be really intense. You know, there's heartache. There's there's anger, there's all kinds of emotions, but the key is let yourself just keep dropping in until you lose your mind, till you don't know where you're at, till all you are is the emotion. And in doing so, you're gonna start unraveling, unraveling, it's not gonna just unravel this lifetime, it's gonna unravel past lives, lifetimes of this kind of betrayal, this particular betrayal, okay? And then as you keep going, you're gonna, you, you'll just keep you taking to deeper, deeper places. And ultimately, when, it's, when you've gone through this, this experience, it's like that frequency is gone and your whole experience with your ex-partner or your partner, whoever betrayed you, it's not gonna be the same because it's, it's, it, it's over, the feelings are over. So the key is, is to wake up to the reality that you've, you know, that you've called this in and that you've co-created this, and that it's at a soul level of unraveling so that you don't have to do this again, okay? So to show up differently means taking responsibility, owning your reactions, owning that you did call this in, that you did ask for this at a soul level, and that you're willing to deal with it at that soul level. Of course, you had a, a big reaction, but if you take it off your partner and you pull it into here right now and re unravel all that, it's gonna change your life. Okay, now I'm gonna go up here to another one here. So Joe Burgess, can forgiveness clear betrayals? Would forgiving ourselves work to removing feelings of betrayal? Are we responsible for forgiving the other person? Okay, let me just talk now, yeah, that's a good one. Forgiveness, people, you can't forgive just by saying, I'm gonna forgive. Okay, there's too much energy, there's too much wounding, there's too much interference. So in order to forgive, first you have to unravel what it is you're forgiving. What, what reaction did you have where you wanna blame somebody? I don't, you guys, here's the thing. I don't care what it is. I don't care if someone came and murdered your child, okay? When you wake up and realize what's really going on here, you're gonna treat it differently. You're gonna go through the, the despair, the anguish, the, the loss, you're gonna go through all of that, but you're not gonna make it out there. You're gonna keep it in here, okay? And in that unraveling, it's like mega healing happens and occurs for you. But forgiveness, you cannot forgive unless you have cleared the frequency in which you are being activated. So whatever that is, whatever, you know, whatever's happened to you where you feel like you need to forgive or you wanna forgive someone, don't keep trying to forgive, it isn't gonna work. Forgiveness happens naturally and organically when you clear your own reactions that you had when you felt somehow that, that you were harmed or hurt or now you gotta forgive, okay? So forgiveness will come all by itself, all by itself, you can't make it happen, when you clear up your own wounding. Okay, and then would forgiving ourselves work to remove feelings of betrayal? Again, people, to forgive yourself. I mean, you know, it's like I hear this stuff all the time, and it's like if you could forgive yourself, you would, wouldn't you? All right? Okay, so, you know, we want to forgive ourselves, okay? It's not, okay, I'm going to forgive myself. I want to forgive myself for something. Well, it doesn't just happen, does it? We have to go in again. It's the same thing, people. Whatever got activated in that feeling of, our, of wanting to forgive ourselves, what is it you want to forgive yourself for? Okay, so first identify what it is you want to forgive yourself for, and then think about that, be with that, and let those emotional feelings arise, and then unravel them by knowing them, by feeling them, by embracing them, by becoming them, and in doing so, self-forgiveness will organically happen. 
okay? And then also, are we responsible for forgiving the other person? Yeah, and you don't have any responsibility at all. You don't have to do anything. You know, it's, it's really all about who's suffering. If you're holding a grudge on somebody, if you're feeling like um, you're judging somebody and you want to forgive them, who's in suffering? Who's the one suffering? Whose body, whose emotions are you feeling? Whose body are you living in? What do you have to wake up every day to? Yourself, okay? So with yourself, basically, it's all about unraveling your own stuff, period, the end. That's it. And so as you unravel, then you get clearer, okay? So, and then also, the, the, the we don't have a responsibility to forgive anybody, okay? It's just, a, we just don't. Okay, and then we got a Roseanne. She's saying, um, I'm going to just pin this one. It's hard to accept. Yes, so hard to accept our transgression. So we finally can, so we can finally forgive. Okay, again, people, it's still, you guys, it's the same. I'm telling you. If you got, if you feel like you've done something, then you got to face it, meaning you got to come in and face and feel what has been activated inside of you. Okay, when you've done something and you know you've caused harm, you're still going to have to come in and feel it and, and embrace it so that you won't be doing this hurtful stuff to other people. Okay, so we stop that cycle. We stop that, you know, that jump on this and and keep blaming and, and keep doing over and over. You know, it kind of reminds me, <laughs> you know, like in the Catholic Church. Of course, I was um, baptized Catholic. Okay, so I can say things. So, you know, <laughs> going to confession and being, you know, forgiven and then going out and doing it again. What's that? What's up with that? So basically what I'm saying is you unravel this stuff. And when you do, you don't go do it again, okay? Because you're freed from it. You're freed from the cause, the impetus to cause you to do these things, get unraveled, and they also get cleared. So you're not doing this kind of thing anymore. You're done. Okay, hang on a second. We got Laura, Laura Lee. I'm going to hang. I'm going to pin her for a sec. Laura Lee. Laura Lee Weir. Okay, I have been trying to clear the feelings of injustice. A neighbor's behavior, okay, repeated many clearings, library, wondering if there's a per perverse <laughs> pleasure and suffering. I feel really discouraged. Okay, so, all right, so yes, okay, so again, remember, you've called this in. So are you actually going in and allowing yourself to really feel, like, I know that you said that you've been doing clearings, repeated clearings in the library, um, wondering if you got perverse pleasure. I mean, everyone's got some kind of perverse pleasure in their suffering, which is another thing to wake up to. Perverse pleasure in your suffering. We can cover that another time, but that's huge. Okay, so, Laura Lee, let me just take a quick check in on you just to see what's going on. Because let me just see, does she have perverse? Oh, yeah. You, uh huh. You got major perverse pleasure in your suffering. So, eat, you guys, here's another thing. Even though we, our mind says, I want this to stop. I don't want this anymore. And yet it keeps happening. Well, there's something that's getting fed out of it. Okay, it might be entities, but usually you've got perverse pleasure in your own suffering. Okay, but still, let me just check again. So the neighbor's behavior. Okay, perverse pleasure, clear, lots of clearings. Okay, so Laura Lee, when you think about, I want you to actually do that right now. I want you to think about your neighbor. And I want you to think about, you know, the, the suffering that you've had because of that, okay? Because of your neighbor. Um, obviously, it's, it's a big thing. Otherwise, you wouldn't be talking about it. But when you think about that, see what's happening. you got a major past life unraveling that you're trying to do with your neighbor, okay? Um, I don't know what you've done in clearings. I don't know if you've only done group clearings, Um yeah, so the library. Yeah, you're getting it from the library. Yep. Okay, so sometimes what it really means is it, it means a deeper unraveling of past lives, agreements and contracts, things of that nature, okay? And at the same time, for you, there's probably still components of emotions that you haven't felt yet that you haven't faced in and unravel. So it might also have a quality of where you feel impotent, where you feel like hopeless or helpless. So those two are all part of the energies that you're being asked to drop into and know yourself in these ways, to understand and to know what these experiences feel like. 
okay so again people it's it's still it's always the same kind of unraveling doesn't matter what the issues are it all just presents in our external world but it's showing us that there's places within that we haven't fully embraced that we haven't fully known all the way you know for example when i mentioned earlier about feeling like you know feeling the intensity of heartache and the and feeling like my heart honest to god for real it was shattering and i didn't think i could survive i didn't think i could live it was so intense okay and but my question to you is when you do you know yourselves in these ways so when you're when you're dealing with your Laura Lee, when you're dealing with your neighbors and all the stuff that it keeps bringing up for you are you facing it? Are you, are you dropping in? Are you coming in and really knowing these emotions and then the releasing them so they don't exist anymore? Here's the thing about energy, people. Whatever's inside of you, okay, whatever you got, whatever your wounding is, okay, whatever that is, whatever that is, you're going to get the same energy out externally to come in and to help activate that. Okay, so it also you also pull in discarnates with the same kind of frequencies. So here you are uh, with that neighbor situation, and you know you got past lives. There's a big angst in past lives with this neighbor. You guys are like, well, hang on a second. Are they like, oh, you're like enemies. Yeah. Okay. So you got like major enemy thing happening. Well, now here you are. You come in this lifetime. You move next door to each other, and you don't know why, but you meet. You know, there's like something's going on here. Okay. So that's what's really happening is you, you're bringing stuff forward from past incarnations, and of course you don't remember. And now here it is, and now you're having these big experiences, and you know our natural inclination is to blame, make it about the neighbor. But here's the thing, people, if you want to wake up, if you want to be on a, on a journey of your soul's evolution, and if you want to accelerate your life, you have to take responsibility. You have to be accountable. You can't keep blaming anybody else, okay? So, you know, if in my world, if I moved in next door to an enemy, mortal enemy, and I didn't know it, of course, but I would know it on some level because stuff would be hitting the fan. So then I would begin to track and go, oh, huh, what do I got going here? Oh, I got some past life stuff. Okay, so Laura Lee has this major mortal enemy, okay? So part of the journey is unraveling the agreements and contracts to know yourselves in these ways and then to see the bigger picture and then also to start releasing the past lives and also the conclusions and beliefs that came from that experience with the mortal enemy. And in that, you've got conclusions in your subconscious that have to do with, hang on, uh-huh, mm-hmm. Okay, so in, in your subconscious, literally in your subconscious, Laura Lee, you've got um, a belief that you anchored in. And that belief is you're never gonna be freed from this person. They're always gonna be attacking you. Did they, hang on a second, let me just check. Okay, did that did the enemy kill? Yes, okay, that one even killed you, okay? So you might even feel like life-threatening sometimes with the situation, okay? So for you, it really means, I mean, I would really encourage you to get a, a, an actual session on this um, because it's like, it's, it, there's a lot to it. There's a lot of components to that. So basically, you're just, you know, you're trying to unravel all those things in your subconscious, but you, you have these beliefs and these conclusions and as long as you have those, you're gonna keep these things anchored in. That's another thing about your beliefs and conclusions, you keep things anchored in, okay? So whatever you've got, drawn a conclusion about, you anchored in your subconscious and then it doesn't just go away, all right? So again, with Laura Lee, I get that you feel, you know, it's like it's, it's discouraged and you could feel tortured, but at the same time, check to make sure you've unraveled all the things I'm referring to, because if you haven't, then you you know then you haven't unraveled it okay so that's another thing people if you've been getting clearings it just means and you're not free from something it just means you haven't got all the components yet all the pieces all the aspects of it if you understand that you've had hundreds of lifetimes thousands of lifetimes then you're going to realize that it's more than just a couple of clearings and you're liberated not going to happen that's unrealistic okay all righty all right 
Okay, I'm gonna go to Jim Bailey here. Oh, Paul Howard, cool. There's a couple of people I just wanna say hi to, Paul and Shane, these are my guys. Okay, I'm gonna pin Jim for a second. Whoops, did that work? Yeah, okay, when we were doing healing work classes, clearings for physical health issues and still don't heal, what blocks us? Okay, you know, Jim, it's the same thing, JM, it's the same thing. It's like finding all the components, finding all the, the pieces, finding all the, you know, the interferences. It's just, you know, it's a matter of tracking, really. It's all about tracking. So if you're doing it or someone else is doing it, here's the thing, here's the thing. This is good. Okay, so when you have an issue or some, you know, what, I don't care if it's health issues, emotional issues, mental issues, physical issues, doesn't matter. You have a, a, an emotional feeling connected to all of that, right? So when, that's, when you think about your, um, whatever, the, whatever issue it is that, you want, that you're working on, you always know if you cleaned it up because when you think about it, you know, be no reaction. Reactions will be over, finished, okay? So even on health issues, you can, like when you right now, Jam, when you think about the health issues, okay, and if you've got reactions or judgments or fears or even the or thoughts around, I'm never going to heal, this is never going to end, why is this happening, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever your thoughts are, when you get, when you clean up all the pieces, all the past life pieces, all the discarnates, the implants, the interferences, dark horse interferences, alien interferences, all these different things, and then you think about it, and there's no, nothing, it's totally neutral, then the body can start to heal. And also then the um, other, other issues that you've been having, there, it's like, they go away. It's over, people. This is my point. You get the core. You no longer feel any reaction whatsoever. You're totally neutral with it. It's over. Everything starts to change from there. So hopefully that makes sense, okay? All right, let me just go back up here. Okay, so I pinned him. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, I think I answered that one. It's just finding, truly finding what, um, what's in the way what's you know what's really blocking you you got to get all the pe people you got to get all the pieces okay Laura Lee, yes it feels <laughs> yeah okay it does feel life-threatening yeah but see here's the thing you got to get more unraveling and you got to get all the pieces okay i have had sleep issues since okay let's see luminati mm -hmm. how to forget <laughs> okay let's pull this one up let's pull this one up this one's good. All right. So Julie, Julie Blakeman, how to forgive Illuminati, et cetera, for state of the world, climate change, wars, animal torture, et cetera. All righty. Who is it? Who's been part of the Illuminati? Okay, people, here's another thing. We've all made agreements to have these experiences. This isn't just the Illuminati. This is the whole world, the, all of humanity co-creating together to know itself in all these ways. I mean, you know, it's like there are so many components that we have all been a part of, we have all contributed to, that we are all still contributing to. Even the fact that you're, you know, the, the thought of what the Illuminati did. And what Illuminati, that's not just one person. This is like, this is like a major uh, society, so to, so, so to speak. And, you know, it's like, what, what, let's just back, let's just say things like, okay, what about animals being tortured? Every day you see little children out torturing animals, okay? Why are they doing it? Why are they doing it? What are they learning, okay? Climate change. Guys, I hate to tell you, we're all part of it. We are all a part of this. You can't think that you're not. If you're alive right now, you are a co-creator in everything that's happening in the world. The key for everyone um, is, is can you be neutral? Can you stop blaming somebody else, putting it onto somebody else? You're the reason, they're the reason, okay? Again, let's go back to, the, it's the same thing. So Julie, the same thing I'm telling other people, I'm telling you, you have these reactions, I'm, you're having big reactions, okay? And in doing, and in these reactions, 
there's your doorway in. I can tell you straight up, you guys, the world could be on fire and we can still be at peace and be able to function and help fight the fire without, oh my God, we're on fire. Okay, no, it's more like, oh, what do we need to do? Okay, get it done. But there's not that same reactivity, you know? So the world is such that it's a mass of energy moving, moving. It's the consciousness of all of humanity all swirled in, moving together, co-creating together. But we can still be at peace in the midst of destruction, devastation. We can be totally at peace when we are clear inside. So again, people, whatever you're reacting to, it's your doorway in. All right. Okay, let's see here. One night, so my arm glow. <laughs> and my aunt's up specs. Okay, that's, let me see. I'm just going to come back up here, see what we got. Okay, so I'm going to train myself became a small, I struggle with growing business and become overwhelmed. No. Okay. <laughs> okay, I want to do something. Okay, I want people with Tracy. I'm pin Tracy, okay? So I want people to see. Look, how'd that work? Can I just do something? Okay, so Tracy. Okay, yeah. So see, check this out, people. She's almost enjoying getting triggered so she can do clearing. Okay? <laughs> Good on you, Tracy, because you know what? It's the truth, you guys. I'm telling you. Once you start, once you start, once you start having an experience where you've gone, well, you had you had your reaction, you got triggered, and you and rather than keep pointing out there, you come right back in here and come in and you unravel, and it's like, whoa, liberated. That feels so good. And then it's like Alrighty then, what's next? Okay, so you kind of get excited about the liberation process. So thank you, Tracy, for sharing that. That's cool. Okay, now let me come back up here. Okay, we got that. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, okay. Okay, so I'm gonna hang on a second. I'm gonna pull back. And uh, this one right here, because I was doing what, okay. Okay, so, yeah, so she responded. So this is the um, experience, the situation with ex-partner, work on he healing wounds. Okay, but now just an event popped up a few minutes before your live conference. Okay, yeah, so now, now you know what to do with it. Stop, stop, stop making it about them and make it about you. It's your opportunity. Okay, opportunity for, <laughs> opportunity for Leslie, you're funny. Your opportunity, it's an opportunity for you. Seriously, people, it's, it's your opportunity. How do you clear? So Nancy's asking, how do you clear? All righty, let's talk about how to clear. All right, if you know how to move energy, you can clear energy. Okay, now the thing is, is like when we're clearing our own energy, we can clear a lot, but there's still gonna be places that we're not gonna see because we're directly connected, okay? So we do need each other. And there's things you can clear. There's things like, for example, if you're, Nancy, if you're uh, like mind chatter, you got these judgments running or these thoughts running, those are all discarnates, they're not you. That's easy clear, okay? You bring the light in, you connect with those thoughts, you let these thoughts know you're not me, you don't belong here, it's time to go home. Get a sense, of, maybe get a sense of if you want, see what they want, need, what they're looking for, and give it to them in the light, and then have them leave. Discarnates are pretty easy to, to release most of the time. Sometimes, you know, they're anchored in, or sometimes you've actually got them anchored in. Also, clearing, when I clear too, when I teach my, my classes on heal or heal thyself, you have to learn how to heal and clear your own energy. So basically, when I'm clearing, I'll tell people either pull your own energy in front of you or come out and turn around and look back, but you have to be in a state of neutrality. But basically, whatever, you know, we're clearing all kinds of things, Nancy, so it's not just uh, entities, you know what I mean? It's like there's, there's just so much to clearing work that you know, I, it takes a whole program to teach you how to clear it all. But basically, in a nutshell, when you become aware of things that aren't you, you can feel sensations in your body, things moving around, aches and pains, change locations. That's a, that's a red flag for entities, discarnates. So basically, again, you know, talk to them, tell them, get out, bring the light in, call the light in. You're all connected to the light. I don't care who you are. I don't care if the blackest demon of 
the world, okay, you're still connected with the light because the light is everything. So no matter what, you can call, you can, you know, send things home into the light. So want to know more about clearing programs, take my programs. I got uh, programs coming up. Okay, let's see. Okay, pain is there something? What about physical pain? Oh, okay, that's a good one. Hang on a second, people. I just want to I want to address something. Um, physical pain. I've done this hundreds of times, hundreds of times. People will have physical pain in the body. I don't know that yet. It's true for this person, but I, I just want to say something. In physical pain, I've <laughs> I've had people coming in. They're getting ready to go in for surgery, surgery. Getting one person had, was going in for knee. I've had actually a couple of knee surgery people. They came in, did a clearing. They walked up the table. They didn't need surgery. Okay. So what happens, people, is not always and occasionally, actually a lot. So in a past life, you have an injury. You have um, something that happens to the body, like blows to the body or falls, broken bones, where the body is in a lot of pain and you suffered, you will anchor that in and you'll carry that in into your future incarnations. And then when you're then in the body, there'll be aches and pains and then there's no, you'll go to doctors, you'll, you know, you get x-rayed off everything you can get and they're, they're telling you it's all in your head. Okay, or they can't find anything or whatever, and it's a physical pain. Well, what's happening is that energy, that, that, that experience is still lodged in your body. The, so you've carried it over in your soul imprint. You've incarnated. Now that energy has gone into this physical body. Now the frequency is going to those areas where you had this injury, and it makes it a weak spot, and then that also becomes an area where other things can actually truly happen in this lifetime. But basically, when we clean up that past life and we release the trauma and the pain of that and then release it on the body here and clear out all the trauma, clear out the, the, all the energy and all the frequency, and then just like that, the pain is gone. Gone, okay? I had a good friend. He's a chiropractor. Known him since uh, early, late 90s. And he came and saw me when I was in Arizona. 2010, 29, and he was—he he didn't tell me this before, but he hadn't been able to turn his head for years, like 15 years, and he's been to all kinds of doctors and chiropractors and modalities. I mean, he does Aspire, and I mean, there's all kinds of modalities out there, people. If you're seeking consciousness, you're going to find all kinds of modalities. So he did just about everything he could. I'm sitting here looking at him, and I go, okay, I walked right over did my little thing, pulled the implant out, and it's like, oh, he had full mobility, okay? And I did talk to, and we did talk about this like three years after that, and he still was totally fine, okay? All it was was the frequency from, oh, no, that was an implant, sorry. Sorry, you guys, that was an implant, okay? Okay, so the, the thing about the injury, the injury past life, yes, okay. So past life injury, yes, um, um, uh, pulling out and clearing out the the energy of that past life and then i what i do literally is i'm putting my hand over it and i can watch and i see this everything coming back skin made like new bones made like new tissue made like new you know the whole area and i'm watching it and produce and it's done and then the pain is gone just like that okay so just really quickly i just want to check on something let me just see here okay what what, what? come on now the pin one. Okay. So this is, did I do this? Yeah. Miriam. Okay. Physical pain. feels like there's something stuck in her body. It's hard to surrender her emotions when you, ah, so she feels pain over the entire body. Let me just take a quick look at that, sweetie. All right. So let me, yeah, you got to, what is that? She's got a major black thing. What is it? Charcoal gray. What is that thing in there? What, 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 what is, okay. Hang on a second. Is this the pain stuff? Yes. All right. So I'm going to just move that energy out, and let's just see how that feels, okay? So I'm talking to Mergem or Murum, Mergem. I'm not good at pronouncing it, not, nothing personal. Okay, so now I can see her energy. There's a, it's full body, big old energy. Those of you who um, I want to learn a little bit, track, you know, I'm going to point things out, and if you can see it, sense it, feel it, then, you're, you know, you'll, you'll get a sense of it. Okay, so in her body, there's just, it's huge. 
and it's like you know off of the body through the head all the way down has consciousness okay looks a little alien okay but at the same time what it's like a it's like okay so what happens for me i start to get a knowing of what this is about so sometimes there's like a like being punished so there's something to do with being punished not from this lifetime but there's something some kind of punishment happening can i just want to check to see is she also um believing that she did no okay so this isn't so it's not about her believing she deserved to be punished although she does have that in there a little bit deeper but this particular energy isn't that so did she call this in no okay so this is an interference okay higher level super consciousness yeah good 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 okay good good take mm -hmm, good all right cool i'm just going to release i'm going to pull this thing out of her body it's a major, major, major thing coming out, 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 out. She doesn't need any more. I guess we're done with this lesson, whatever this lesson growth was. Clear that frequency out. Cast that out. Go, 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 go. Clear, clear, clear. Be gone, be gone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good. Clear, 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 clear. Go. Out, 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 out. Go. Mm-hmm, 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 mm -hmm. good. Good, good. Okay, now just check your body and just see if that feels um, any any more, like see if that feels like a little bit more relaxed in your body. Okay, let me know whatever you notice. All right, cool. So we're coming on down to our, we're coming on down to our like, yeah, our almost um, at our end. So we'll keep on, I wanna do an activation for everyone. So everyone gets a activation, all righty? So let's go ahead, close your eyes, bring your awareness into your body. Make sure your awareness is right behind your eyes. Mm -hmm. Good. Now I'm going to come in right behind that third eye, and I'm going to go ahead and start activating that energy right there. So it starts to open up more of your clairvoyant. Let's start activating. I'm going to call in your light, light print. This is your original light print prior to all your emotional wounding. Good, 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 good. I'm going to start activating, activating, activating right behind there. <clears throat> good. So we got the pineal, the pituitary, yeah, 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 thymus, yeah, these are all connected. Okay, now we're going to go right into the heart center because heart center is really important. I'm actually going to activate the, the second chakra and the fourth chakra, the emotional center, um, sexual center, and then the heart chakra, heart center, all righty? So first we're going to go right into the heart center. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now I'm going to pull out some debris out of the heart center out of everyone. You got, yeah, you got blockages, literally clear, clear, clear. Okay, I'm going to blast it with light, calling in the light, 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 light inside of everyone, blasting in that heart center. Let's get out debris they don't need. They're ready to be done with. Let it go. Let it go. Now the intention desires to have the heart open so you have less judgments, less reactions, less finding fault. Less making wrong. Yeah, your heart open, feeling more love, more connected, more joyful, more light, more passionate, more alive. So we're going to open up that heart center. We're going to activate that aliveness inside. Yeah, good. Bringing in more light, 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 light. Activating, activating. There we go. Excellent. Beautiful. Good. Now, good. Now I'm going to go down to that second chakra. I'm going to actually, I'm going to keep little things in that heart center to keep little bubbles, little activators. So I'm going to keep moving things out of your heart center. We're going to leave these in for 72 hours. Good. And I'm going to go down to the second chakra. Whoa. All right. Okay. All right. We got to clean out a bunch of stuff in here. I'm going to blast some light in here. I'm going to put paddle wheels in here. We're going to keep these in for 72 hours as well. But now I'm going to activate the, the core, the pure light print, your original light print free from all your wounding, free from all this emotional pain. Yeah, 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 all these beliefs, yeah, 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 the suffering of humanity, yes. Bringing in the light, 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 clear, 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 spinning, spinning, paddle wheels, paddle wheels, paddle wheels, stronger, stronger, faster, amp it up, amp it up, there we go. Let's get this stuff out, it's time. We're in the new paradigm, moving in a new paradigm, it's time for the stuff to move, time to clear this stuff up, there we go. Clearing, clearing, spin, 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 activating, activating, activating the pure frequency of the original light print of that second chakra of your soul's evolution prior to wounding. How cool is that? All right, cool. Clear, 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 clear. There we go. Keep those energies moving, moving, moving. Mm -hmm. Good, good, good. Now we're going to keep these, these paddle wheels, these frequencies going. 
in your body for 72 hours. And what that means is you can have emotions, memories, pictures, images, all kinds of stuff can happen. If you remember what's happening, you soften, let it happen, and let it just keep unraveling. You don't want to grab hold. You want to hold on to. You want to let things go. Okay? All right. So people, we got good things coming. We got classes. We got to awaken the shaman. You want to learn. You want to wake up your shaman. Do it. If you want to study with me? It's starting in July. If you want to go with me, ten dayers. It'll be in probably September. Big things happening. But we got lots of cool things. So watch out for our newsletters and all that good stuff. So people, thank you for being here. Thank you for showing up. Appreciate it. And you know, watch for our newsletters or even our even on our. Facebook page, this one, you'll be able to know what's coming up. We got more things coming and um, we've got more, you know, more opportunities all the time. The team's really showing up, so more things are, are happening. There's more group clearings, there's some more semi privates, there's more, more of everything. Okay, so you guys, we're here to help. We're all, you know, we're all on the same side, we want the same thing, and we're going the same place, and we're all exactly the same, only different. Alrighty, people, till next time. Thank you.